Hey guys, Will from Project BIZ here. Today I'm going to be running you through the engineering process that I went through to get my car 100% street legal here in New South Wales in Australia. Now, the process is a little bit different depending on whereabouts you live in the world. So what I'm going to do is in this video, I'm going to try and keep it as generic as I possibly can to make it relevant for as many people as possible. Um, what I've done is I've made, I've put an article on my website, which I'll link now, which goes through everything in a lot more detail with specific things for New South Wales. So have a read of that as well, and um, hopefully that'll help you out in a little bit more detail. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to try and keep this as sort of like a top-level overview of the process, and um, hopefully it'll give you a better understanding of exactly what's required to get your car legal. Now, from the very start, what I'll say is this, it's, it's not an easy process. Um, it really pays to, to really know what you're doing right from the start with this whole thing. Um, a lot of people seem to think that getting an engineer certification is as simple as just taking your car to an engineer regardless of the modifications and just saying here make it legal and or here certify it and like it it, it doesn't work that way you, your car has to be your car has to be legal like your car your car has to be safe to pass so if you've if you've done things like fit crazy brakes and you know, chopped springs and cut your crash bar to put in a front mount intercooler and things like that, you're not going to pass. Um, you're going to need to change things around. So, so yeah, it, it pays to make sure that you do things properly right from the start so you're not toing and froing and having to fix things later on. But if, you, if you've been sensible and you've done things the right way right from the start, then it should be pretty straightforward. Um, now, the certification process itself consists of three phases. So, well, two phases for some people, three for others. So, the first phase is the um, is the emissions testing. Second phase is brake testing, which you only need to do if you've modified your braking system. Don't know if that re I don't know if that applies to rotors and pads. I wouldn't think that it would. But um, if you obviously if you've changed your calipers, brake lines, ABS module, master cylinder, things like that, then you're definitely going to need to do that part. Your engineer will be able to tell you whether you need to or not, though. So just ask them. And the last phase is the actual engineer's inspection where they'll go over the car, check it all in detail, make sure that everything's legit, and then they'll sign off. So you need all three of those things in order to get the certification. Okay, so we'll start with the emissions process. Now, for me, this was the hardest part of all. Um, I had a feeling it was going to be difficult, and it did not, um, it did not disappoint me. Um, now... What happens is you take you you book your car in for an emissions test, um, usually about a week in advance, but it'll depend on whereabouts you are. So I won't go into the details of the booking and everything here now. Um, again, that's all available in the article for you to read. Now, when you arrive, you um, they they'll take your car into a sealed environment, like a sealed dyno cell. You can't go in there, and um, strap it down and they run a they run a what's basically a simulation test for 240 seconds and what that's doing is it's taking your car through a range of everyday driving kind of scenarios so it simulates driving up a hill at low speed coasting down a hill engine braking you know all the all those kinds of everyday driving scenarios and there's a probe connected to your exhaust which is what's well, a five gas analyzer and it, it analyzes the, um, the THC, the NOx, the CO, and the CO2 levels. And CO2 doesn't contribute to the pass or fail, but the, um, the others do. So if any of those go over the limit, which is stipulated by the Australian or the international standard relevant to the area that the car is registered, any of those go over in grams per kilometer for the duration of the test, then you'll fail. So... Um, so it's not about well it's not it's not as simple as saying oh your your engine's running too rich between 3000 and 5000 rpm you know it's it's not it's not that simple it's a very 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 fine art to um to tuning for emissions and um so i i highly recommend that you you know you speak to your tuner in detail right from the start and make sure that they understand that you're going to want to pass emissions with the car and um they should be able to tune to suit that um, having said that, you may still fail a couple of times. Um, it's not easy, and there are a lot of environmental variables from day to day as well. But um, familiarize yourself with the with the test procedure, which I've linked in the article, and make sure that your tuner is familiar with that process as well, and that should help you out a lot. 
Um, that's all I'll talk about with with the emissions side of things. So they'll give you a they'll give you a printout of the um, of the either fail or pass. Um, and at least in my experience, the emissions guys were really friendly. They were happy to sort of explain to me as best they could. Um, you know why it why it had passed or failed, but they they can't give you an exact fix. So you know there's there's going to be some trial and error in that. So just be prepared to um, have to retune a couple of times and spend a bit of money putting the car back on the dyno each time. Um, but yeah, if you if you if your tuner understands what you're trying to achieve with the car, then it should be pretty straightforward. Now one of the one of the things I will quickly just touch on with with emissions as well is that. Um, they're not the police, so they're not going to throw a red sticker on your car and you know make you catch a taxi home if you fail. But having having said that, driving you know while they're not going to stop you from driving the car home, it is a pretty hefty risk that you're taking. Now, um, it's not only if you get pulled over by the police in an unroadworthy car you're going to get a big fine. Um, there's also insurance implications as well. So, for example, if you're in an accident in a car that's not technically legal, then your insurance company could refuse the claim, and that could not only mean that you end up paying for whatever repairs, but you could also end up paying for the other person's repairs or even medical bills and property damage. So, it is a pretty big risk. Um, for me, I was more than happy to spend a bit of money to... Um, to make sure that everything was 100% legal, so yeah, just just consider consider all of the um, consider all of the things there that are factors. Don't just think, oh well, if I don't get pulled over, it's not a problem. Um, but yeah, you can drive away from the emissions test. Um, they're not going to book you on the spot or anything like that. So yeah, don't be too concerned about that. Um, in my case, I did drive the car. I just drove it straight back to the tuner to retune and then back again. So yeah, I I took the risk, but. Yeah, it's up to you. Now, um, the next part of the test is the brake tests, if if it's relevant for you, if you've modified the brakes. Now, um, that's as simple as just putting an accelerometer module in the car, which any any approved mechanic should have. It's exactly the same as the test you do for a routine rego check. So they, um, they chuck the accelerometer in the car, they drive around the block, they slam on the brakes, and they check that the braking force is adequate and that there's no locking in, in any corner and the car's not sliding or doing anything crazy. So they'll give you the little printed out slip to give you the result or a, and a pass or fail. And um, then you take that to your engineer as well. So that's pretty. That's that's the easy part of the test. Um, you know, I would hope that nobody's driving around in a car that's going to fail that test. So you should be should be sweet with that. The last part is the engineers um, is the engineers inspection. Now, there's a whole bunch of rules around what's legal and what isn't. Um, as I said earlier on in the video, you know, it's not as simple as just taking your car there and saying here certify it. Um, you know, it will need to have certain things in order in order to pass. Um, the most basic things are you can't have removed any airbags, you can't have modified the crash dynamics of the car at all. So if you've modif if you've cut your crash beam to fit an intercooler or something like that, you're probably going to have problems. Um, door hinges are another one. There's a whole bunch of stuff. Um, again, I've gone through a list in the article which you can read that gives you you know the most basic stuff. And again, check with your engineer before you go to make sure that um, that everything that you've done is not going to be a problem. Um, the worst thing is going to be if you, you know, if you go and then they say, no, you got to change this, 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 and this, and then you, you end up toing and froing and it's just a nightmare. So get it right from the start and you shouldn't have any, you shouldn't have any, any dramas with it. Um, so they'll check your car over, they'll take it for a road test, make sure that everything's, everything's okay. And, um, then they'll give you a, um, they'll give you a printed out result and, um, report. They'll also lodge that report with the relevant online, um, with the relevant um, authorities online as well. So, in my case, it was the um, Roads and Maritime Services. So they lodge that report number with them, and that means that if I get pulled over by the police, they can actually look up and see, yep, okay, this car with this registration, this VIN, and this engine number is legit. And um, one thing that I should probably touch on with the engineer's report as well is that. They don't list every single modification you've done to the car. Um, they list the things that need to be certified. So things like tyres not being too stretched over the rims, 
um, wheels not being too wide or beyond the specification of the car. Um, suspension is at the um, legal ride height, things like that. Now, a lot of people told me that coilovers and adjustable ride height suspension can't be engineered. Uh, that's not true, it can. I have the proof, my car passed and I'm running coilovers. What's important is that the car is not below the legal ride height for your area, which in my area is 100 millimeters. So the lowest point of the car can't be lower than 100 millimeters off the ground. Now, when you when you look at the engineer's report, it actually says, you know, car was received as is at the time of testing and passed at that time. So there's nothing to stop a, a um to stop the cops from saying, well. No, clearly you've changed this since. So you can't you can't just go and get your engineering report and then drop your car to an illegal height and go, well, sorry, officer, it's legal. It isn't. Um, you know, they'll still get out their little trundle wheel and they'll still check. And if they believe that you've modified the car after, you know, in a way that affects affects its legality after the engineer's report, then the engineer's report's worth nothing. So get all your modifications done before <laughs> before you take it to the engineer because anything that you change afterwards isn't going to be covered. Um, but hopefully, if you've got the engineer's report with you and you know you're, you're sensible about it, then you shouldn't have too many problems with the police. Um, so that pretty much sums up the process. Um, it, it's a it's a pain in the ass. I won't lie. Um, emissions made me, yeah, made me want to sell the car for a while, <laughs> trying to pass. Um, yeah, I went back and I had to take a couple of days off work to um, to get it through and yeah, it was a real pain and it, it killed the love for the car for a while there. But um, we got there in the end and um, you know, I'm very thankful for the guys at Tune House for all their efforts. Um, obviously being the first time that they tuned the um, Craftworks kit, um, yeah, it was always going to be a bit of a learning experience. But hopefully anybody else that has the kit now in Australia, it'll be, yep, yeah, alright, this is what we need to do, no problem. Um, the other thing I should also mention as well is exhaust. Now, catalytic converters need to be installed to pass emissions. You're not going to pass emissions without, with a, you know, with a catalyst system or you know a track pipe or anything like that. Um, so, what I did is I ran the stock exhaust with emissions tuning. Um, I'm running dual maps on my car with with Ecutech Race Rom. So I've got my power tune, which is the um, one which is tuned with the um, with the Catless headers, and that would be just for track use. And then I've got my straight tune, which is the emissions tune, which is with the stock exhaust, stock catalytic converters, and all that kind of stuff. So, um, so yeah, that's important as well. Don't try and pass emissions with a um, with a straight through exhaust because there's no way you, no no amount of tuning is going to make you pass on a modern car without catalytic converters installed um high flow catalytic converters in in performance exhausts can pass don't have any experience with it personally though so i can't really tell you but your tuner should be able to give you a good idea of whether or whether or not they think that your car will be able to pass with the exhaust that's on it okay so the last thing to mention about the whole engineering process which is a question that i've been asked a lot is um what about noise levels? Now, the IM240 emissions test doesn't account for noise at all, so it's no problem, but your engineer does need to test for noise levels as part of their report, is my understanding anyway. So if the car's crazy loud, you're not going to pass. So um, again, make sure that you've, you're sensible with your exhaust modifications. Now, you're not, a, you're not removing emissions equipment, so technically you could go and change your exhaust after you've got the... Um, after you've got the engineer's report. But again, if you get pulled over by a policeman and they say, no, too loud, you're going to have to go to the EPA and, you know, if you've changed something, you're not going to pass. So it pays to do everything above board and, you know, right the first time. So that pretty much summarizes the whole process. Hopefully you've found this video useful. And, um, yeah, again, check the, check the article that I've put up on my website, um, which goes into it in a little bit more detail. Like the channel like the like the video subscribe to the channel if you found this useful and um, I will see you again soon thanks a lot for watching bye